So, Produce 48, So Senkyo, and Boonshun at it again with another scandal. This is the AKB48 group news of the week. Let's start off with Produce 48. So, it's been two weeks since I did the weekly news, but I have a big compilation of everything that has happened. And let's start off with Produce 48, and that is with the song that actually got revealed before the actual TV show aired. I'm not familiar with the actual show, like I know before it was Produce 101, and this time it's Produce 48. And they showed the song already with a Sakura-centered song. I think it's really interesting how they pulled it off with the whole triangles coming together to make a square from the different groups together. And the fact that they included both Korean and Japanese lyrics into it. And I still see a lot of people complaining that they call trainees even though they've been in AKB, which is a group that's well known and I mean look at Matsui Juna, she's been in there for so long and she probably makes a lot of money, <laughs> but she's still a trainee. But of course that is the name for the people who are participating in Produce 48, so I can understand both sides of the spectrum. But yeah, song's pretty catchy if you like this type of music, so definitely go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. Speaking of which, there's already like a top 12 candidates of the Japanese side, and I mean, number one is of course the person who was the center, that's Sakura. But then we look at number two, it's Goto Moe, which is pretty interesting. Number three is Asai Nanami, and I mean, in between, all the way to number 12, we have people like Mako, Miru, Eri, Tomu, Vivian, Jurina, and even Nagao Hitomi is in there. But then number 12, we have Miyazaki Miho, and under that are all the arrests. So it seems like these people have left the biggest impression on the people who watch. And of course, this was just a poll, it isn't like affecting the show totally, but so far it seems like these are the favorites, and that's thanks to the PR videos that came out. Since the show is starting June 15th, they actually released PR videos of the members introducing themselves and kind of doing like a little special talent. Uh, there's some that are good, like piano plus singing. There are some that are a little bit different, like Matsui Jurinas, that kind of feels off if there's no music in the background. But that's not the only video they released. They actually released a wink video, which is them winking along with the song. It's kind of a strange concept, but it seems to kind of work with most of the members. There's some members like Sakura who can't wink, so the video's pretty funny. And then of course there's like master winkers like Jurina who go in there and just go like a master. <laughs> But those aren't the only PR videos that came out. Actually, we have the Sosankyo appeal videos. For those of you who don't know, maybe you know Produce 48 and you're just coming into this fresh. The Sosankyo, or the Senbatsu Sosankyo, is actually a competition where fans vote for their favorite members to go and place. So this is according to how many people get to vote for the members. So one CD equals one vote. And this is a big event that happens every single year for the 48th group. So a lot of fans pull up money, they go and buy truckloads of CDs, and it gets pretty crazy around this time of year. The appeal videos actually came out, and you get to see different kinds. Uh, there's 334 videos, so I'm not gonna sit through and watch all of them, but I did watch a couple. Um, there's a lot of running off of the camera, whether that's just running off or changing into like a marathon suit and running off, and there's a lot of drawing. Especially of Occupy for some reason. <laughs> but there's some highlights from the ones I've seen so far. If you guys have any good ones, you can leave them down below. We have Gata Moe and Iwatahina with the bird. There's someone else with the bird I'll talk about later. There's Seina and Oguri Yui who eat a cookie. There's, I know, very interesting, right? There's Chiba Eri who ruins the background paper. She must have been the last one, I imagine. Then we have Muto Orin who talks about the 16 gen members, which is pretty nice of her to take her time of her appeal video and talk about her fellow gen members. Then we have Izorina who's representing the BMK strong this year. We have Maho doing some magic with her. Maho ho 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 We have Sakura who does a windy weather report. We have Minigishi who starts beatboxing a little. We have Judy who eats Paki with the camera. So if that's your thing, you can go ahead and watch that. Then we have Akane which might be the best one I've seen so far because she plays Jenga. She plays that one pirate in the barrel game. And then at the end, you just have to watch to see what happens at the end. And something interesting that happened is actually Matsuri Jurin actually directly called out her competition. That's Yokoyama, Miru, Sakura. She called them out, which is pretty different from everyone else that I saw. She directly called them out. Of course, she was in the pro wrestling outfit that she has, but she still called them out saying she will come on top and be number one. And even if she wins, she won't graduate. 
which I think might be like a stab at someone else. And there was even different people who started off in different languages, like we had Jurina who started in English, and we have Maho who started in, I think it was Mandarin. And of course we have Nozawa who did hers fully in English, and even showed like the papers showing it in Japanese just so the Japanese audience wouldn't be turned off by it. So she is making an appeal to the international fandom. So definitely if you have a spare vote, give it to her since she is what looks like to be the most confident in that the international fandom can do something about it. So let's go ahead and show her that we can do something. Again, let me know who your favorites are down in the comments down below so I can go ahead and check them out as well as everyone else can go ahead and check them out. But that's not the only So Thank You thing that came out. The posters have come out. It was shown on Showroom, but now more official pictures have come out. Let me see some of the favorites that I have. Renachi with the throwback. We have Mutotomo with the aesthetic flowers. We have Okaranana with the edginess to it. Then we have Macharin because Macharin. Then we have Asai Nanami with the style points. We have Hashimoto Na I mean Goto Moe in there. We have Jirina who is actually outside for her photo, not in the studio. We have Akiyoshi Yuka for Ganba Tang and taking a picture even though she's injured. We have Sakaguchi Riko for the award for the most Photoshop. And then we have Sakura for the award of stealing Harupi's jacket. And that's not all for Sosenkyo. Actually, the prediction list has came out from the official Sosenkyo book. And there's some pretty interesting choices for this. Number 16 is Macharin, which I hope happens. And then of course we have Miru at number 12. I think that's kind of low for her, as well as other people. But an interesting thing is their order for top three, which is what everyone's talking about right now, is number three with Ogiyuka. And then for number two, we have Sakura. And number three, we have Jurina. So pretty interesting that they have them three lined up like that. Again, we won't know until the actual results come in. It'd be pretty interesting, and this one will definitely be worth the watch this year. I'll probably do a live stream before the Sosenkyo, kind of making my picks of who will be my top 16, so look forward to that. I kind of did that last year, and this year should be fun. But next up, let's go into SK48, who has released their information about their 23rd single with the center being Matsui Jurina. And this will come out right after Sosenkyo, so I'm not sure exactly how the sales would do. This comes out July 4th. And with it being so soon after Sosenkyo and all the fans spending their money, I don't know how much money is going to go toward the single. So it's a pretty interesting choice for them to do this. Oh, and by the way, we have Suenaga, Oka, and Saito Kaho who are chosen for the first time to be in the single. Now let's move on to some music videos and all the coupling tracks came out for AKB's new single. So let's go ahead and talk about them. First up, we have Kimi wa Boku no Kaze which is with the group center, the ones who took the test and then won. This is basically the group that is good and remembers a lot of stuff about AKB. And of course the music video is about them studying and in a classroom. And the song is actually pretty nice. Uh, the idol filter is a little bit too high for me, but it is still enjoyable. So go ahead and check that one out. Next up we have Team A with Romantic Junbi Chu, which when I first heard it, it reminded me of like a Nogizaka album song. Like it has that similar vibe, but then I also see some other similarities with older AKB style songs. So if you are interested in something like this, it's a little bit more groovy into it. And the music video is very red and blue themed. Go ahead and check it out. This one is definitely worth watching, especially for the song. And next up we have Team K with Shuren no Yoru. And this one is People can say it's like a little bit Kiyakizaka feeling to it, but it isn't like a Kiyakizaka song. I can definitely see like the sort of feeling that people would get. I think it's especially because of the dark theme that's around it. And especially with it being a little bit darker themed song, I can see definitely where people get the idea. And next up we have Team B with Atarashi Chime. And this one is a little bit of a contrast with the black and white in the actual music video. And I actually like this song, it's very airy feeling, very fresh. And with everyone dancing along, especially with the theme that's going on around the music video, I think it fits pretty nicely into it. And next up we have Neko Allergy, which by the name alone, you can probably guess is going to be a little bit more young feeling. And you definitely do get that impression. In fact, I got a little bit of Hiragana Kiyakizaka impressions, like this could totally be one of their songs. But this song itself, not, not too bad. Not too bad. I won't say it's like the greatest song ever, but I won't say it's, it's a bad song. If you like those very fresh songs where 
just by the name Echo Allergy you can kind of get the vibe for, then I think you might enjoy the song. Music video is a little bit about school and more of a young theme to it. And next up is Equal Love, who actually released two music videos. And I'm going to clump them together because they sort of give me similar vibes. I mean, of course the songs are different, but both of the music videos are just them singing to the camera. And like, and like, maybe like this kind of shots to it. So it isn't really too interesting for me. Like one of them is a little bit more bright while the other one is a little bit more edgy. Uh, I think the edgy song is a little bit better, so go ahead and listen to that one first. The links for all of those will be down below, as well as for all the AKB coupling tracks I talked about, or any links that I mentioned, it will be down below. And next up, let's move into some commercials, starting off with HKT48. They have a commercial for the role-playing game called HKT48 Echo no Labyrinth. And this is for their card game, which is on mobile, probably. And basically, you go into Fantasy World with HKT48 members. I probably talked about it before, but there is actually a commercial for it. It is them on a train as they pass by, and then they see, and then, and then they see a member there sitting down, kind of royal, and they just ignore her. But it's kind of like, oh hey, it could be your fantasy if you want it. Kind of that sort of feel to it. So if you want to watch that, link for that down below. And next up, let's go into some more commercials, but this time from an individual member, and this is Sashihara Areno. And that is for a commercial for Hoken no Madoguchi. And this was basically her just going in and talking in with an insurance agency. That's pretty much all the commercials, so I think this one might be skippable. And next up is Sashi Harareno again for the commercial for Karada Sukoyaka Tea. Uh, this one is basically her having like, I think it looks like a gyoza party, but I think there's other food there. But it's revolves around her and the peoples are extra and then it's just her enjoying food and drinking the tea. So go ahead and watch that one. It's a little bit more interesting than the previous one. <sighs> and that does it for the 48 news. Let's go into graduated starting off with Matsui Rena who is going to be in a Kamen Rider build movie. She's gonna take the role of the governor of Kitamiya and this isn't like a huge role but I mean for the movie it's probably a big deal. She said that she will enjoy this role since kids and parents can watch this movie together and that she's very surprised that she got into a special effects movie. So we will be able to see her maybe with some special effects sometime soon. And next up is Fresh, I guess I should call her by her role name, which is, I have to look at it because I always forget, Ichikawa Miori, who is joining in a stage play for Danganronpa 3. She's going to be playing the character Toa Monaka and I haven't really delve too deep into this. I think I just watched the anime and that's all I did with this. The character she seems to play is like a really smart character who pretends to be in a wheelchair. So it might be interesting to see how they incorporate this into a stage play. So if you want to see this, go ahead and check it out. Because I know I probably won't see it. <laughs> Next up is Kojima Natsuki who actually has recently graduated AKB and is now joining a new talent agency by the name of Fit. Now I'm not too sure about this talent agency, if anyone has any more information about this please leave it down below. But with her joining this new agency, it seems like she will continue with her talent activities and she won't give it up. Oh and also by the way, all of the AKB related social media she's going to give it up at the end of May, so at the end of this month. So I'm not sure if that affects her Twitter as well as her Instagram. But it seems like the things like the blog and other stuff like that will get shut down. And next up is Kita Harareya, who is actually being appointed as the Niigata election ambassador. And since they're having elections since the former governor has left, it seems like she is going to go ahead and promote the elections. So it's a pretty big deal for her to go ahead and do this, and since she had a big deal with NGT and Niigata in general, it seems like this is a good thing for her. And let's throw it back to Ichikawa Miori. Yes, that's the name, not Fresh Lemon. Uh, there's more information about her photo book, and the covers have been released. Uh, honestly, probably not the best photo book covers. In fact, it kind of makes me not want to buy the photo book, so I think I'm not going to buy the photo book. Uh, standard edition, she looks pretty cross-eyed in this. And then we have the Amazon edition, which the eye is a little bit too much to the side and the lipstick color doesn't really go along with the whole theme of the cover. Not a great impression and probably not gonna get the photo book. And last member who we're gonna talk about in the graduated section is Ikomarina who has opened up her Instagram and she already has plenty of photos in there and she even has Nogizaka members in there. 
So plenty of fun there. She does like stories like a lot. So go ahead and check that out if you want to catch up with Ikomarina to see what she's doing. So you can go ahead and follow her down below at Ikomarina underscore 1229. Now let's go into the 46th section starting off with Nogizaka46 announcing the date and the venues of their 6th birthday live. Now this will be held at two different places. Meiji Jingo where they usually hold their, you know, anniversary. And then we also have, oh this is, this is, a, this is a tough name, Chichibonomiya Rugby Stadium. And this will be from the 6th to 8th of July. And this will actually kick off the summer tour because in Fukuoka, they were going to be there from the 21st to 22nd of July at the Fukuoka Yahoo Japan Dome. In Osaka, 4th to 5th of August at the Nagai Stadium. We have Aichi, the 26th to 27th at Nagoya Dome. And then we have Sendai, the 1st to 2nd of September at the Hitome Bore Stadium, Miyagi. So, if you are interested in this, uh, tickets will probably come up soon. If not already, don't know about that. But as always, the people who go in first are the people who are part of the Nogizaka mail. And then afterwards, the regular tickets get raffled off. Uh, don't think I'll be able to go this year. Um, if there's anything maybe near October, I'll think about it. So if you are in Japan though, definitely go ahead and check these out. I mean, who wants to go to Japan in the summer? It's like super humid anyway. Next up, we have Kiyakizaka46 with their first million singles sale and Nogizaka took a while, AKB took a while, Kiyakizaka with the hype of both of those groups together they were able to come up with a 1 million pretty fast and I mean pretty fast so congratulations to Kiyakizaka for doing a great job but speaking of Kiyakizaka we have Hiragana Kiyakizaka and thanks to the Twitter that does the usual thing they do when they release a new single is just say like the date and the time so everybody gets all excited on the website, they actually teased it a little bit, but it's not exactly what people were hoping for. It is pretty much just a picture, and there's even like a little video, but nothing too significant, not even like an album title, or how many songs are going to be on it, or which members are going to be in the actual song. So people are kind of disappointed about this. It's a little bit of a teaser, and I mean, with the album coming out pretty soon, it's probably better for them to start teasing a little bit harder and not just like putting up a picture of just maybe their outfits. And next up, let's go into some commercials starting off with Nogizaka and with a 7-Eleven commercial. This one is actually pretty nice because it's them popping out and then having stuff that kind of relates to them. Like we have Wakatsuki and Reika together, of course. Of course you have to have them together, but she's also holding chopsticks because, you know, Hashikun. And we have other people doing different stuff. Like we have Ash who's reading a book and stuff like that. So a nice little homage to the characteristics of the members. And next up we have Shiroshin Mai who's in a commercial for Kagome, which is actually a beauty product and it's a nice little cute little commercial, I think it's like 15 seconds long, and it's basically her picking something out, little leaves come out of her head, it reminds me of like the Pikmin from 46 hour TV, but it's a nice little commercial to watch. And now we get into the juicy tidbits that recently just happened with Boon Shun capturing some images or obtaining some images even of Shira Monica and Nishino Nanase. First up we have Shira Monica who we have a purikura of her kissing a guy and it's pretty blurry so it's not perfectly identifiable especially with the fact that it's a purikura and they kind of alter the faces so blurriness plus this equals some people being suspicious of it and plus what I think is it could be like a really old image like before she was an idol, since apparently she's had like boyfriends before. So I mean, and then next up we have Nishi no Nanase, who is apparently going out with the director. Uh, in the photos it's her with the group going places and there's like nine pictures or something like that, or so twelve. And it's mainly them with the group, <laughs> so it's not really too hard evidence, so it doesn't really matter and I mean even in the video she's walking with a lady and then she gets in the car with only the lady so I mean might be a bit of a stretch uh, Bunshun might have been following her around for like a month and then be like okay we're kind of wasting money here if there's nothing really going on so let's kind of like stretch it out a little bit and make it like oh hanging out this guy's in common I mean Bunshun does what they do I mean people read it so they get the money and that's how they live 
And I mean, if people keep on reading it, then they'll keep on doing it kind of thing to it. Again, if there's a demand for it, then someone has to supply it. It's like, I'm not going to say a necessary evil, but it is something to be taken advantage of. So speaking of individual members, let's go into more individual members. Starting off with Inoue Sayori, who is going to be a voice actress in an anime. This will be for the anime Lord of Vermilion? 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 One of those. And I think it's based off of a Square Enix title. Oh, it's based off of an arcade trading card game series. And this will air on July 2018. I don't imagine her playing a main character. Oh, in fact, she is one of the main characters. It is for ducks. Oh, apparently I read that wrong in the beginning. She's going to be a mysterious female knight completely clad in armor. So, it seems like she's going to play a main character in this. And it should be really interesting to see her playing a main character in an anime. So, look forward to that when it comes out and definitely watch it. Next up is Sakura Eureka, who is going to be in another musical. We have the one I talked about last time with her being like kind of a conjoined twin. And this time it is for a musical called Rebecca. This is based on an international version and this is actually the Japanese version. And she'll be able to play this character in the winter. This is triple cast, so she won't be playing it throughout the whole event, kind of like how Ikuta Erika does. So she'll be able to go in there and play the main character as altern alternate takes usually how musicals work, right? Like you can't have people singing every single day. At least in that level. So if you're able to, definitely go ahead and watch this December to February of this year. We're almost done guys, we have like three more topics. Alright, now we have Nogizaka46 with Saito Asuka and with Nisha Nonana said being new models for the fashion brand GRL or Grill, thanks to the person who commented that on the podcast. Yes, so they're new models for the fashion brand and actually during the recent walk that happened, I think it was Tokyo Girls Collection. I'm not too positive on that. So they were able to walk as their models during that runway show. Next up we have Sugayuka. As we know, photo book coming out. We actually have a title for this now. It is Fiancé. And it seems like the parent and her kind of came up with this theme together. So pretty interesting that they chose this theme. I guess it kind of fits with what's going on. Even though it's in Paris. So yes, look forward. I'm pretty curious to see why they actually titled it like this. So I guess we'll only find out when the photo book comes out. And last bit of news is again with another photo book. And this was Shiraishi Mai's photo book. You know, the second one that came out, Passport. Well, now it's over 300,000 copies sold. This is more than like what some of the 48 group people get. Like two of them combined. Just to put it in like a little bit of perspective how much it's sold. This is actually the number one most sold photo book in Kodansha's history. It used to be like the number one solo photo book, but now it's like the most photo book sold in general. So I mean, 300,000, that's like a crazy number to think about that that many people bought this. So congratulations to her. I think it's been reprinted like every single month this, that it's actually been out. It's been reprinted 19 times. So congratulations, it's actually a great photo book. If you haven't picked it up, I definitely recommend picking it up. I mean, look how many people have, because it's a great photo book. And that does it all for the news this week. You can go ahead and subscribe to keep up to date. Go ahead and check out the Slope Podcast where we talk about the Sakamichi series every single week. There is the video on YouTube and even on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and different platforms. Go ahead and like this video and leave your comments down below about anything that I talked about. And I'll go ahead and read it and try to reply to you guys. That does it for this week, and as I say every single week, thank you all for watching.